These financial journalists highlight six companies that they deem as compelling buys at present, asserting that these should be on any investor's list of potential investments. Each entity boasts robust historical results and a promising future outlook. Let us delve deeper to comprehend what has propelled these firms to the apex of their recommendation list. DigitalOcean, trading under the ticker symbol DOCN, is a cloud infrastructure provider catering to small and medium-sized enterprises. With DigitalOcean's market capitalization under under $3 billion, massive competitors like Amazon and Microsoft tend to overshadow it. However, DigitalOcean offers two key advantages that its megatech peers cannot provide without undermining their business models. These two advantages would be pricing transparency and its DigitalOcean community. The posted pricing allows small businesses to purchase only the services they require, thereby saving money for clients who frequently operate on tight budgets. Additionally, the community provides customers with documentation and access to other DigitalOcean users. Hence, clients who cannot afford a full-fledged information technology department can rely on this network to assist in problem-solving endeavors. Admittedly, DigitalOcean has faced unique challenges. Small businesses fail more frequently than larger enterprises, leading to higher customer turnover rates. Furthermore, the stock experienced a decline last year after the company announced a change in its chief executive officer position. While this transition created uncertainty, Patty Srinivasan brings years of software-as-a-service leadership experience that could potentially reinvigorate the company's trajectory. Despite its obstacles, DigitalOcean's growth has been robust. The company reported revenue of $693 million in 2023, a 20% increase over the previous year. It also earned $19 million in net income in 2023, a marked improvement over its $28 million loss in the prior year. Although its newly profitable status results in a high price-to-earnings ratio, its forward price-to-earnings ratio stands at a reasonable 20. Given this bargain valuation, its competitive niche, and the growing demand for cloud services, DigitalOcean could potentially yield outsized returns as it fosters its continued expansion. Up next, we have C Limited, which is a Southeast Asian conglomerate specializing in gaming, e-commerce, and financial technology. Amid its e-commerce leadership in Southeast Asia, its popular mobile game Free Fire and a rapidly growing fintech segment, this has caused the stock to soar during the 2021 bull market. Nonetheless, as stocks began to turn downward in late 2021, problems mounted for the company. A ban on Free Fire in India failed market entries outside of Southeast Asia, and competition with TikTok is among its manifold challenges. However, Free Fire is close to returning to India as it addresses security concerns. Moreover, beyond a continued presence in Brazil, C Limited's e-commerce arm, which is primarily focused on its core region of Southeast Asia, is investing heavily in logistics within this area, and that is great news. The current stock price is approximately 80% below its all-time high, and it may be closer to a financial recovery than some might perceive. Although its $13 billion in revenue for 2023 grew by only 5% due to struggles in the gaming segment, the company did bring in $163 million in profit, which marked its first annual profitability. Because of this, analysts believe the improvements will continue as they predict 116% earnings growth this year and a 163 3% increase in 2025. C is unlikely to sustain triple-digit profit growth in the long run. However, with a rapid growth rate for two of its three segments and a forward price-to-earnings ratio of 37, investors might want to consider C Limited while it is still a bargain. Now let's talk about Shopify, which has prospered in the e-commerce space by allowing merchants to sell without depending on Amazon. Although many companies offer e-commerce platforms, Shopify stands out with its easy-to-use, customizable platform. Additionally, an extensive ecosystem that includes payments, inventory management, email marketing, and many other functions helps it support an estimated 10% of all e-commerce transactions. Admittedly, it may have taken its ecosystem expansion too far when it attempted to venture into the logistics business, a move that returned the company to net losses. Still, Shopify has since reversed course and sold that business, allowing it to return to profitability. 
for 2023, revenue of just under $7.1 billion rose 26% from 2022 as the company continued attracting more merchants to its platform. Also, despite a $1.3 billion impairment charge from the sale of the logistics business, Shopify still earned $152 million in comprehensive income for the year, well above the $3.5 billion loss in 2022. Looking forward, Shopify expects revenue growth in the low 20s percentage range, likely leading to a considerable profit increase. Indeed, the 69 forward price to earnings ratio may seem pricey and the high valuation may have led to its sell off in recent weeks. Nonetheless, the five year average for its forward earnings multiple is 85. That alone is a testament to the optimism about Shopify's future and could make the current period an opportune time to add shares. Next up, we will talk about Costco. If you have ever had the experience of navigating a crowded Costco wholesale parking lot just to gain entry into the store, you have experienced firsthand why the company has grown to be the third largest largest retailer in the world. Costco's membership fee business model was unique when it began, but it has been a driver of the company's results for decades. In just the last 12 months, Costco brought in nearly $5 billion in membership fees. Costco has also proven to be resilient to slowing economic conditions. While the current period may not be classified as a recession, inflation has led to people pulling back on spending, if only slightly. To the extent that this is the case, Costco has not felt the impact. In its fiscal second quarter, which ended in February, Costco reported same-store sales growth of 5.6% and an increase of 5.3% in traffic. On top of that, Costco's value proposition is clear to its members, who renew at a rate of over 90%. Now let's move on to Amazon. For those not paying attention to the stock over the past few years, it may come as a surprise that in 2022, it traded for its lowest price since early 2019. This was due to substantial operating losses in its e-commerce business because of the spending on its distribution footprint necessary to meet pandemic-fueled demand. In the fourth quarter of 2022, Amazon reported an operating loss of $240 million in its North American segment and an operating loss of $2.2 billion in its international segment. In the fourth quarter of 2023, these improved to an operating income of $6.6 billion in North America and an operating loss of $419 million in the international segment. These figures are a result of a concerted effort to right-size the business coming out of the pandemic's height. This improvement in operating results led to net income improving by more than $10 billion and free cash flow, increasing by nearly $50 billion. Lastly, we will talk about Palantir Technologies, which has been gaining significant traction through its artificial intelligence offerings. The company's data analytics suites like Apollo, Foundry, and Gotham continue to see strong uptake from Palantir's clientele. Most notably, the company also launched its artificial intelligence platform, which is backed with strong support via several government contracts. Palantir stock surged 167% last year and another 24% in 2024. Now, many investors are wondering where the stock is headed next after selling off from its recent peak. A rising big data leader, Palantir has shifted focus toward its artificial intelligence platform, leading to robust growth. Boot camps have helped convert leads into clients, with the company reporting 103 deals over $1 million dollars in the fourth quarter. Impressively, Palantir's quarter one revenue target is between $612 million and $616 million, with plenty of attention expected to be paid to the company's upcoming earnings results on May 6th. With solid government revenue, Palantir has become a relatively strong artificial intelligence investment for growth investors seeking meaningful upside from the current point. However, some bears point to Palantir's valuation of 22 times sales as likely unsustainable sustainable, unless growth absolutely skyrockets in the years to come. Here's what to make of Palantir stock and whether this equity has what it takes to ride the next artificial intelligence wave higher. A recent deal with Oracle includes moving Palantir's Foundry software platform to Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Additionally, Palantir will deploy Gotham and its artificial intelligence platform on Oracle's cloud. Oracle, with only 2% market share in this space, aims to boost its cloud infrastructure and compete with major players. 
Palantir has seen success with immersive boot camp events to promote its artificial intelligence platform software. These events helped identify artificial intelligence use cases and contributed to robust customer growth. The partnership with Oracle could open new avenues for customer lead generation and advance Palantir's artificial intelligence initiatives. While the Oracle Palantir partnership shows promise, significant gains may take time. Investing based solely on this deal is not wise. Examining each company's fundamentals is prudent. Oracle's fiscal quarter 3, 2024, revealed $80 billion in remaining performance obligations, indicating high demand for cloud products. Palantir has avoided traditional software sales methods for years, opting for unconventional approaches. The data mining company, co-founded by Peter Thiel, recently held software boot camps to attract new customers. These camps included presentations, software demos, and even racetrack rides for attendees. Chief Executive Officer Alex Karp compared the demand to a rock concert, limiting attendance like backstage access. Despite overflowing demand, analysts suggest Palantir may need to bolster growth support given the complexity of its software. We'll have to see if this results in increased capital expenditures and how margins hold up in this regard. Palantir converts big data into actionable insights for its clientele through subscription-based software solutions ensuring steady revenue. With a significant government contract base, funded in part by the Central Intelligence Agency's venture capital arm, it maintains a unique position in the market. This position has been boosted by recent cloud partnerships and artificial intelligence integrations. These financial journalists think if we do see another artificial intelligence wave hit the market, Palantir will be a clear beneficiary. Accordingly, they are remaining cautiously optimistic about PLTR stock for the time being. In the end, I like all of these companies, but always make sure to do your own research.